This is a story about a miracle from St. John Bosco's life that's so beautiful, it reminds me of our Lord multiplying the loaves and fishes. But first, since we began this week talking about Don Bosco's mother, Mama Margaret, I'm gonna tell you about a story from around the same time that shows her great love of the cross. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On returning home from the war, in which he served in the battalions of the Bersaglieri, or sharpshooters, Joseph Brosio continued to attend oratory gatherings with great faithfulness, always showing great affection for Don Bosco. Joseph wore his military uniform whenever he visited the oratory, and because he was experienced in maneuvers and battles, several companions begged Joseph to help them practice. With Don Bosco's consent, he willingly formed a small regiment of the liveliest and most dexterous young men in the oratory. About 200 rifles without barrels were obtained from the government and exercise sticks were provided. Joseph the Bersaglieri, or sharpshooter, also brought his trumpet. After a while, the oratory had a brigade so well trained that it rivaled at least the National Guard. The boys of the oratory all wished to join the unit. The oratory militia kept good order during church services and inside the house on all great solemnities. Sometimes it performed drills so masterfully that the regiment provided a happy spectacle that earned great applause. These training exercises and the gymnastics taught by the Royal Army's methods appealed to several young men who had left the oratory seeking new experiences, and they returned. And these exercises stopped others from going who, eager for games and amusements, had wanted to desert sacred services to find them. Even the newspaper sometimes mentioned this militia. Once, however, the small army unintentionally caused great unhappiness to one particular person, Mama Margarita, who was second only to Don Bosco in the hearts of all. As a good homemaker, she had planted a vegetable garden at the back of the courtyard and industriously sowed and cultivated it with great care. It provided lettuce, garlic, onions, peas, carrots, turnips, and a thousand other kinds of vegetables. Even a tiny meadow grew grass for her rabbits. A day of great festivity arrived, and the Bersaglieri blasted his trumpet to gather the militia ranks and divide them into two platoons. He wanted to amuse numerous spectators by staging a mock battle. He designated one of the platoons to simulate defeat. Then, to ensure they would not damage Mama Margarita's precious garden, he ordered that the pursuing platoon not step beyond the hedge. He gave the command, charge! The two teams raised a loud shout and began their movements, pointing their wooden rifles at one another. It seemed like a real battle, from the solemn command to the well-ordered charges and discharges of weapons, from the slow advance to the retreats, even including the platoon's exact movements right and left to surprise one another. All that was missing was the thundering of cannons, the crackling of guns, and the falling of dead and wounded. Bystanders were devouring the spectacle with lots of clapping and shouts of bravo. These cheers so fired up the combatants' warlike spirits that the winning side, pressing the vanquished side, no longer observed the terms of surrender. They went so far that the battle was carried right into Mama Margarita's garden. The hedge was toppled and leveled. Everything was trampled and spoiled. The Bersaglieri shouted and blew his trumpet, but the audience's laughter and applause drowned him out. Only a trace of the garden remained when the two squads tidied up. The good Mama Margarita wondered whether the demonstration had been planned to destroy the garden to make the spectacle more intense. With righteous resentment, she turned to her son and said, Look, look, John, what the Bersieri has done. He spoiled my whole vegetable garden. Don Bosco tried to reassure her with a smile and said, Mother, what do you want to do with them? They're young. It was yet another occasion for Mama Margarita to practice her love for the cross. They tried to put the garden back in order, but it never was the same after that, for it disappeared to make more room for the amusements of the young people, yet another example of one of Mama Margarita's sacrifices. 
But before we get to one of the most extraordinary miracles of St. John Bosco's life that occurred when he was celebrating Mass, I'd like to invite you to enroll in our Saturday Mass intentions for the promoters of St. John Bosco. Just click on the link in the description of this video, or you can wait till the end and click on the logo for the Mass that will appear on the screen. You don't have to donate to be included in our weekend Mass intentions, but if you do become a monthly donor, you could receive an incredible book written by St. John Bosco like this one, Sacred History, which briefly explains the events of the New Testament for children, although I'm an adult and I found it extremely interesting. You and I know that there are millions of souls out there who need the inspiration from St. John Bosco to get off the broad path to hell and onto the narrow road to heaven. So please help me keep the channel afloat by becoming a monthly donor and clicking the link in the description below to sign up. God reward you in advance for your help. I couldn't be doing any of this without you. And now on to probably one of the most famous miracles of Don Bosco's life. At around the time of the garden accident, a remarkable event strengthened the boy's resolve to remain loyal to the oratory. It was on a solemn feast day, perhaps the nativity of Mary Most Holy, which was being celebrated in the oratory. About 600 boys had confessed their sins and were ready to receive Holy Communion. Don Bosco began to say Holy Mass, believing that the ciborium in the tabernacle was full of consecrated hosts. Instead, it was almost empty. Buzzetti Giuseppe had forgotten to place another ciborium on the altar, with the altar bread to be consecrated, and he didn't remember until halfway through the Eucharistic prayer. Don Bosco began distributing Holy Communion and felt much anguish upon seeing so few consecrated hosts compared to the large crowd surrounding the altar. Frustrated by putting off so many without giving them the divine sacrament, he raised his eyes to heaven and continued to distribute Holy Communion without fail. And behold, to his amazement, and that of poor Buzzetti, who knelt and thought only of the displeasure that his forgetfulness would cause Don Bosco, they saw that the hosts did not diminish. Don Bosco was able to give Holy Communion to all the boys. When the service was over, Buzzetti explained what had happened to his companions, some of whom had noticed the event. As evidence, Buzzetti showed them the ciborium he had prepared, which still sat in the sacristy. He told his friends about the miracle many times during his life, ready to affirm it by oath. Don Bosco confirmed this account's truth on October 18, 1863. In private conversation, several clerics questioned him about what Buzzetti had said. After a while, Don Bosco became serious and replied, Yes, there were only a few hosts in the ciborium. Nevertheless, I was able to give Holy Communion to all who approached the sacred table, and there were many. By such a miracle, our Lord Jesus Christ wished to show how much he appreciates devout and frequent Holy Communions. Asked what feelings were in his heart then, he continued, I was moved but calm. I thought, the miracle of consecration is greater than that of multiplication. But for everything, may the Lord be praised. Thank you all so much for watching. God bless you and Our Lady keep you. Let's go.